My name is Jimmy Cotter. I'm a senior here at Michigan State. I major in interdisciplinary studies within the College of Social Science and through that I uh, focus on a couple of things, one of which is community advocacy and governance and the other one is geography. Uh, I'm a home to, I'm a local kid, uh, born and raised right up the street in Grand Ledge, Michigan. Uh, more particularly, I'm a, a hometown kid who uh, has lived a very comfortable life. Um, you know, sometimes college is this huge monumental step for students who come miles, sometimes worlds away from home uh, to discover who they are, and uh, that's not what I did. I kind of went to school in my own backyard, and uh, because of that, I kind of only knew one life. Uh, as Kirk said earlier, kind of inside of a, inside of a bubble that um, I was always conscious of, but I didn't know what quite what to make of it. When I came to Michigan State, I was not quick to jump into any major, and I was just hoping to find something new. Uh, but when I did finally declare, my eyes were open to a, a world that I was completely unfamiliar with, uh, a world that is far more uncomfortable than the one I had lived, and um, a world full of social and structural injustices. Um, diving deeper into my discipline, um, I had this crave to discover my own ignorance, and it was that time where I knew it was time to get into something different. Um, that something different came in the form of a study abroad. Luckily, I found myself at an institution that uh, gives so many students a wonderful opportunity at study abroad, and uh, the search was on. Uh, as I clicked on many countries and programs, uh, some, some of which I knew countries of, of literally nothing about and sometimes barely knew existed, but when I stumbled across Tanzania, um, I knew it was the program for me. Um, titled a, a Sustainable Community Development, um, I knew that it would serve as a wonderful academic experience to dive deeper into my discipline of community advocacy and governance as well as geography. But more, uh, more importantly, I knew it would serve as a, as a huge uh, tool of personal growth and, and to grow as a person. Um, then I saw the program fee and it was the lowest program fee that Michigan State has to offer through their study abroad. <laughs> Um, so that really sealed the deal. That's where my first thank you. That's where my first thank you comes into play uh, to the do the donors of the program and to TPP, the Kulchowskis. Obviously not here today, but without them, it would not have been so financially um, possible for the five students who were lucky enough to attend. Um, so I eventually applied and I uh, was accepted. That's why I kind of established my two main goals. My first was to be challenged to find a world completely completely different than mine. Um, that was very important to me, and the second was to, oops, I put one in one, that's supposed to be two. Uh, the second was to make cross-cultural lifelong friends. Um, so with that in mind, on a summer's day, with the support of my parents, I headed to Detroit Metro Airport to travel 8,000 miles away from home for the first time out of the United States of America. Um, we arrived in Tanzania, drove about an hour to where we'd be staying for the first two and a half weeks um, in a small town outside of Arusha called Usa River. I uh, quickly realized that the USA and USA was just about the only thing familiar to me in this area for uh, the next seven weeks ahead of me. The opening weeks were long, uh, classes every single day, um, just trying to prepare ourselves for any uh, cultural, social, or, or language barriers that we may encounter uh, throughout our time in Tanzania. There was definitely some homesickness, but uh, all that was really dwarfed by my experience with uh, the Tanzanian hospital system. Uh, one day I was admitted um, into the Arusha Lutheran Medical Center to be treated for an unknown stomach illness. Um, and when I found out that I would be staying the night, I was absolutely terrified. Um, so I was in it for the long haul. I, uh, the night was full of ups and downs and um, the most uncomfortable I've ever been, but in the still of the night, I couldn't help but think, hey man, this is what you asked for. Um, <laughs> this is where my next thank you comes into play. Uh, luckily, I had a, a man by my side who's here uh, supporting me today, Dr. Felix Kwame Yaboa. He's in the back here. I need to say thanks, thanks Felix, because uh, he truly kept me sane and um, was by my side the entire time, keeping my spirits high and always trying to teach me a valuable lesson along the way. Uh, so I woke the next morning with a sense of accomplishment. I had made it through the night and I was feeling much better. Um, that's when a doctor had caught word that there was an American in the hospital and he was very interested by this. So he came down to pick the mind of a, of a Westerner and I guess to gain some perspective and I graciously accepted this offer. So we chatted uh, along with Felix for probably about an hour, just sharing stories of life, of experiences, and because he was much older than I, he was sharing some wisdom with me. Um, it was a wonderful experience and then he had said something, to me, he had asked me a question and he said, why do you think there's so much poverty in my country? And I was kind of blown away, I'd been in the country for maybe two and a half weeks and I was surprised that he would ask me such a 
<sighs> a complex question, and I, he was quick to remind me of all the wonderful things I had to say about his country and the people in it, uh, but he expected an answer, and it was an answer that I did not have. And he said something along the lines of, Tanzania is one of the most naturally rich countries in the entire world, and is filled with people that you have claimed to be the nicest that you've ever met. Um, that, doesn't tell, that should tell you that it's not our people that are poor, rather it's our leadership. And I kind of had this personal epiph epiphany, and I had realized that um, I was seeing firsthand what I had came to Tanzania for, to see the social and structural injustices. And uh, it's something that I could not learn from the best of professors or the best of textbooks, because it was something that I was learning from a person who had lived the life, and I was seeing it firsthand. Um, so after, being, after escaping Arusha Lutheran Medical Center, I uh, went back to where we were staying, and within the next few days, we took off to the location of our field study, which was a small village by the name of Nitolia. Quickly, we established Nitolia Primary School as kind of our home base for this field study. Um, there, we would be interacting with students uh, and teachers and community members and trying to contextualize the, the community structure of which they live in. We'd be studying developments, effects on gender, education, and quality of life, among many other things. There, I, I met children who came to school every single day without food or without water. But every single day, they brought the same drive to learn and smiles that were bright enough to absolutely expand any heart. But I also heard the stories of the heartbreak of this community and those involved in it. Uh, several instances of bureaucracy getting in the way of the development of quality of life and the struggles and the ups and downs of um, everyday basic things that I, you would think of, such as food and water, that just weren't as accessible as you might think. And it was heartbreaking, but at the same time, these people knew what they were teaching me, and they knew that I appreciated the lessons that I was receiving. Um, then I met a young man by the name of Boniface. Boniface is not uh, two years older than I. He's a teacher at Natolia Primary School, and he is an absolutely prolific one at that. Uh, he wakes up every single day with one goal, and that is to give children an opportunity that he himself did not receive to attend higher education to a university and to propel them to the next step in life. Um, Boniface, uh, he, he did not receive, receive the compensation that he has deserved uh, for a number of reasons. Um, he lives on the school grounds uh, and that is his home. He receives very minimal pay and sometimes it comes weeks later than it expected. And Boniface once told me that he feels like he is stuck in an unforgiving world. But each day he wakes up with a smile on his face and does, as my father would say, continues to fight the good fight. Uh, Boniface taught me countless things. He taught me what real problems are, what real struggles and real hardships are, and how to always persevere through that. Because if you are able to persevere, there is always something better on the other side. He showed me what real work ethic is. Um, he, is he is pretty much the same age as I am, and he does something every day that I am certain that I am not a strong enough man to do at this point in my life. And he does it every single day with the utmost sincerity. He told me how key positive attitudes are and how it'll, it'll get you through anything. But most importantly, he taught me to appreciate the opportunities I have in America and the things I'm able to do to come to visit his country as a Western student to, to, to understand these perspectives and bring them home and implement them in my everyday life. And that is truly everything, uh, the opportunities that all of us have had as, as we've shared with each other today. He helped me accomplish uh, my second goal uh, in, in gaining cross-cultural lifelong friend, but he helped me exceed it as well as I was able to form a brotherhood with this man. I speak with him uh, as often as I can. This day and age, communication is much easier than it once has been, so we are very fortunate for that. Um, of course, he's not the only friend that I made and had to leave behind in Tanzania, but he's certainly left um, the biggest impact on my life. Um, this trip was everything to me. I mean, it changed my perspective on everything. It, it, it changed me as a person, and, and certainly for the better. Anyone who knows me certainly can see that. Um, it also really helped break down barriers of the continent of Africa and its respected countries that I have from skewed Western perceptions. Um, that's one of the things I take most pride in. Perhaps this lesson is, is no, no better illustrated than, as my friend Felix back here told me, uh, an old African proverb that says something along the lines of, until the lion learns to speak, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Now when broken down, it carries a strong, strong message and um, that is something that I will take with me forever. Um, I wish I could go on and on about the stories I have and the experiences that I've um, been so fortunate enough to, to have, but 
Um, unfortunately, this is all the time I have for you today. I really appreciate all of you listening and your interest, and uh, that's all I have.